In the land of words with Flera, there's a tasty one, Chingadera. Its spice is bold beyond compara, but use it wisely with great care. It dances on the tongue, debonera, but might cause a stir, so beware. Chingadera is fun, a word so rara. Just be mindful. When you share us. <laughs> <laughs>Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we connect with each other. We connect with the news from our city, state, and country, of which there are not that many today, unless you want to hear about cars going into water canals or people getting murdered or, you know, accidents. Today, there were a lot of those, but there wasn't a lot of interesting news. But that's okay. We're going to connect with other things, such as your comments and your ideas and your suggestions so that we can best enjoy ourselves and each other in this city of ours called Puerto Vallarta. And of course, today, you wouldn't know this because I just made the decision earlier this morning. Today is, oh my God, you guys stop. Jeez. Oh my God, I'm blushing like a schoolgirl. Yesterday is my birthday. I said it. I'm going to go hide again. No, seriously, today is all about Mark Jennings, not about me. Today is all about the wonderful Mark Jennings. And I'll explain myself in a moment. But first, let us tackle the bits of news that I have for you. Oh, my goodness. This is very strange. Ah, okay, I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Uh, let us let us let me share with you the little bit of news that I have for you today so that we can then dedicate this entire broadcast to Mark and I'll explain why in a second first let us open our news and I'll tell you that our governor governor Enrique Alfaro has requested a 15-day leave of absence as part of his personal transition plan to retire from politics once his term is over this coming December. It is well known that one of the governor's personal passions is football, so could we see him involved with the Chivas, which is our state's soccer team? We don't know. But it is worth appreciating that after 20 years devoted to politics nonstop, it may take some time for Governor Alfaro to organize his next step. When recently asked about why he is leaving politics, Governor Alfaro stated, it is better to leave politics behind than for politics to leave you behind. And that was very wise of our governor. I want to tell you that this weekend, I had a great weekend. I wanted to go to the two um, art shows that were going on on Saturday, and I made it to both of them. I first stopped at the joint boutique hotel and co-work 
where I ran into our dear friend Pamela, who was selling her, her sprays, and it was great to do some purchases with her. But then I really wanted to get to Monson Brewing uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've had, well, first of all, there was another art show going on there um, by Lucy from Etro Mano. And secondly, I've, I've had these really wonderful email exchanges with Miranda from Monson. And I love her because I have no reason to love her other than the fact that I think she's a wonderful woman. She works hard. She is a mother, a business owner, and she is just gives me the best of vibes. And I've never met her in person until this weekend. And I wanted to go and visit with her. And I wanted to go and purchase one of these glasses that has the Monson logo on it. I don't know if you can see this clearly, but I think the logo is absolutely fun. I don't need another glass, but I figured I really want a glass and I really want to meet Miranda and I want to give her a hug. And that's exactly what happened. And it was great to be there. But then I figured, well, you know, it's it's hot. I got to have a beer and they have some excellent choices. And I wanted something light and something fruity. I like fruit-based beers. And when they told me they had a watermelon beer, I said to myself, okay, I found Nirvana. And I tried their watermelon beer, and it was absolutely amazing. Amazing. If you are a beer drinker, I am sure there are other types of beers there that you would enjoy. But I was so taken by the... Um, by the watermelon beer and the beautiful thing um is that they they can their own beers check this out so not only did i love the beer but i was able to buy a couple of these i would have bought more probably but i got two of these viva la vida long live life uh watermelon beers from monson i tell you ah uh, you have to try this i mean i've yeah, I have no, I can't stop gushing about it. In fact, I want to go back. I don't know when that'll happen, but I did want to share that. Needless to say, I, it's so funny because I was in a pool party. I was at a pool party and I left early from the pool party because uh, I wanted to go to these two shindigs. But I was so excited about these beers. I didn't buy them for myself, really. I wanted to share them with my friends. So I got in touch with my friends who were at the pool party and I said to them, are you still at the pool? And they said, yes. So I came back with treats. And that's what I like to do with my friends to share all the wonderful things that happen in my life with them. And now let's share uh, boom, 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 weather information with you. But first, let's take a look at this. In next week's music appreciation presentation, titled Mambo Madness, we take a look at mambo, a genre of Cuban music pioneered in the late 1930s and later popularized in the big band style by Perez Prado. You will discover how the music became a dance craze in Mexico and the United States until it was dethroned by cha-cha-cha. As usual, we will rely on video and audio selections to tell the story of this music, which has had a major impact around the world. The meeting is on Thursday, July 11 at the Joint Boutique Hotel and Co-Work on Insurgentes Street at 5 p.m. The music will be hot, and tickets are already available for purchase at the front desk, but rest assured, we will enjoy the experience in air-conditioned comfort. Hope to see you there, and thank you for spreading the word. Ooh, and I just noticed that my, my little jingle says next week, whereas Mambo is this week. It is going to be this coming Thursday, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I spent a lot of time putting it together this weekend, and I'm looking forward to that. But first, let's take a quick look at the weather. Holy, oh my goodness. 
Holy fucking shit, the sun is here. <laughs> Our weatherman is not holding back with colorful metaphors this morning. 29 degrees out there, humidity is high at 80%, and yeah, I can feel it. And uh, today we can expect partly cloudy skies in the morning with rain in the afternoon. A high of 32, a low of 26, and a chance of rain of 36%. Then tomorrow, light rain with scattered thunderstorms throughout the day, a chance of rain of 56%, a high of 31, and a low of 26. And then Wednesday, light rain throughout the day, a chance of rain of 69%, a high of 30, and a low of 26. So not much exciting happening there, the usual stuff. And, you know, I just hope it rains because it's been a little balmy. Uh, over the past two or three days, I found myself um, wearing out my sweat rags halfway through my errands, but you didn't need to know that. I want to continue before we go into explaining why this show is devoted to Mark Jennings. I was doing my usual house cleaning and or, you know, coffee and headlines maintenance cleaning over the weekend. And what do you know? Over the past month, we reached 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I want to do a special shout out to friends that watch us on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for following Coffee and Headlines and uh, being a part of our community. And I do run into a number of people walking out and about that are not into Facebook and you know that's okay that's why we are into different places so for those of you that regularly watch on YouTube thank you thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for your support and that's that so okay scattered I am so scattered today I am sorry about that uh, let me tell you that when I was at this um, pool party on Saturday I ran into Linda Linda whose last name escapes me but she is married to Mark Mark Jennings Mark and Linda so I ran into Linda she came to the party with our friend Gina and she told me that she and Mark are headed to Mexico City and that it's Mark's first visit and I asked well where are you staying and what are you planning to do and she's like, well, we're staying in a hotel along Reforma, which is one of the big promenades in Mexico City. And Mark has never been, and he loves history. So I came up with a couple of suggestions for her, and I told her I would send them her way. But then this morning, I started looking at the map, and I'm like, there is so much fun stuff in that general area. So I'm going to share with you whether you like it or not, the places that I would go to if I was staying in one of the beautiful hotels along Reforma and I liked history and this is the way the trip would go. Now, for starters, Paseo de la Reforma in the heart of Mexico City is this gorgeous gorgeous, super wide promenade. You can see that there are three lanes or maybe four lanes each way on this beautiful avenue. And then you see the trees. And under the trees, next to the buildings, there are two additional lanes, which are like the laterals. And in between the laterals and the inside of the road, there's this super wide, gorgeous sidewalk slash promenade full of not always but there's oh there's sometimes great things that are being exhibited places to sit things to look at it is just a beautiful beautiful promenade you're looking at the angel de la independencia or independence angel sculpture and behind the sculpture if if the angel was to turn around you would see the chapultepec palace now, I don't know exactly where on Paseo de la Reforma our friends are staying, but I can tell you that... Turun, turun, turun. Here's a little map. 
En This Map Shows, Paseo de la Reforma, there's the Ángel de la Independencia down here. And it goes all this way. And if you turn right here, there is the Alameda, there's a Fine Arts Palace. And the first place that I recommended to them was the Diego Rivera Mural Museum, which is right here. Mark, better prepare yourself for a lot of walking. But here is the Diego Rivera Museum. Uh, not the only museum of Diego Rivera in Mexico City, but this is the one where prior to this building becoming a museum, he was commissioned to paint this phenomenal, phenomenal mural that is the whole history of Mexico in one mural. We've talked about this uh, both here at Coffee and Headlines and also in one of my music appreciation presentations, the one that has to do with Mexico's history, which is coming up in September, by the way. And this is a pretty sizable mural. If you look at the size of this, um, uh, the, the comparison between the size of the mural and this man that is standing here looking at the mural, it is quite sizable. So this is definitely something that I would want to look at. But going back to the to the museum, I mean, going back to the map, here's the Diego Rivera Museum. And down here is the Popular Art Museum. And this is another museum that is totally worth exploring. The Popular Arts Museum has, well, Mexico's popular art. So you can think about it two ways. You know, if you want to be jaded, you can think, oh, my God, it's a lot of the same chingaderas that they sell at arts and crafts stores. I'm not interested. And that's okay. Fair enough. But these are Mexico's popular arts elevated to the quality of the finest craftspeople in the country. And it is truly a stunning array of the diversity of Mexico's popular art. So this is, again, not far from Reforma and, um, and easy to get to. And then, of course, there's the Alameda Central, which is Mexico's big um, main park. And right next to it is the Fine Arts Palace. It's right over here. And the Fine Arts Palace, well, what can I tell you? It's Mexico City's primest, most beautiful, most magnificent uh, performing arts space. And it's sinking. It is so creepy because <laughs> you get there and, and you can see, you look at the sidewalk right next to it and, and the whole thing is, is coming down through the gears because as you know, Mexico City was built on top of a lake. Uh, but it is gorgeous outside, and it's gorgeous inside, and you get to see, it is also a museum, and you get to see exhibitions of different artists. Some of them are permanent uh, works of art, others are itinerant. But if you're lucky enough to be able to go inside of the concert hall, and you're lucky enough to look at that stainless Stainless? No, stained glass. That's what I'm trying to say. That stained glass curtain, one of a kind in the world, designed by Tiffany, brought down here from New York City, and it's a gorgeous mural depicting the two large volcanoes that are near Mexico City, the Popocatépetl and the Itzaccíhuatl. Uh, they don't always lower the curtain, and the Fine Arts Palace is not always, the concert hall is not always open for visitors, but if you happen to luck, to, to luck out, you can certainly enjoy this. And now back to the map. Here is Fine Arts Palace. See this street that, that is over here? Well, this street, if you walk four blocks to the right, you're going to end up at Mexico City Zócalo which is like, there's the, the government palace, there's the Palacio de Gobierno, there's the Metropolitan Cathedral, and it is now pedestrian only. So if you're interested in the history of Mexico, there you have it. And right around the corner from, uh, 
from the church is the Templo Mayor, which is on, on that corner over there, which is some of the most recent excavations that have been made of uh, ruins from the Aztec times. And of course, uh, if I was to, I am looking at the flag, and if I was to turn around and look at the kitty cat corner from this corner, there is the Grand Hotel, the El Gran Hotel de la Ciudad de México. This is one of the most beautiful, opulent, historic hotels in Mexico City. More Tiffany, more Tiffany on the roof. So just to be able to walk into the lobby of this hotel and get a cocktail and get a sense as to the history of this building. Um, it's, it's just an amazing opportunity. So this is a little bit of what I would choose to look at if I was staying near the historic center of Mexico City, if I was staying in Paseo de la Reforma. Um, I hope this is inspiring for you, Mark and Linda, and I will be happy to leave websites for all these places in the show notes. Mexico City, it's kind of like New York City. You have to go. There are so many things to look at, and it all boils down to the part of the city where you're staying. Of course, you could venture to other parts of the city, but I don't know how long you're going to be there. And, um, and, um, but I do hope that you bring your walking shoes and you get a chance to see some of this stuff. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to create these connections with and for you. I hope they are inspiring. And now who wants some chit chat? Let's jump over to chit chat mode. Okay, so lots of good mornings, lots of good afternoons, lots of birthday wishes. Thank you very much for all the good energy. It is much appreciated. I find birthdays terrifying, but that's just me. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I really, really am. Uh, let's see what we see here. I'm looking for comments. Uh, purum pum pum, purum pum pum. Lucy, it was great to see you. Um, there's a sp oh a special request. Let's take a look at this. I have a special request. Since neither Mexico or the U.S. remain in Copa America, could everyone cheer for Canada tomorrow in the semifinals? Sure, why not? I'll be happy to do that. I love soccer legs i love soccer legs that's all i'm gonna say and i'll be happy to cheer for canada why not uh let's see let's see let's see oh lovely more love for miranda and monson bob says i have been enjoying monson for a few months you know i really wish i lived closer but next time I find myself in Emiliano Zapata, I will be urged to go back for some more of that watermelon beer. Oh, my God. Lisa says, I also love Miranda and Reed at Monson Brewing Company. They were absolutely wonderful. Oh, what a great idea. Watermelon beer on ice with Raicilla. Party. Uh, sign me up, Albert. If you're here soon, um, let's go find some Raicilla and let's try some... Let's figure out the best proportion, shall we? I would love to do that. Um, Paula also loves Monson. This is great to hear. Um, Lucy, it is always a pleasure. I had a lovely conversation with Lucy about some of the other activities that she's been doing at a ranch called, I believe it's called Madre Tierra. I'm hoping that Lucy will join us in the spotlight sometime in the near future. As you know, we are promoting local event organizers and service providers every Wednesday afternoon. Um, let's see. I love it. Barbara says, must try the watermelon beer. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Good wishes from Muffin. Thank you, Muffin. Uh, I am always reminded of an epic pool party in Sayulita that thankfully took place before social media was such a big part of lives. 
Oh my God, you're talking about my 50th birthday party. That was quite memorable. Let's not remember that. Um, <laughs> that was fun. Uh, let's see. Let's see what else we have. More birthday wishes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Laura says, I love the program. Lots of information. I appreciate the cluster's input as well. Isn't it wonderful, Laura? You see, this is, this, for me, it's a great experience because... I get nourished by your questions and it's inspiring to go look for information and I invariably end up learning something new whenever I go on, on, on a mission to find information to share with you. So it goes and comes and goes and comes and I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, let's see. Barbara st says, thanks for the info about Mexico City. You know, I haven't been in... A long time but I do know that if and when I go back I would want to stay exactly where Mark and Linda are staying because there's just so much so much uh, oh that's wonderful Mark says we'll be there for two weeks so we'll have time to do it all I think Mark please you and Linda stay in touch with me if you need more tips I hope you have a fantastic time in Mexico City it should be a lot of fun. And Albert says he's going to be here in August. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. There goes my liver. I love it. Yes, let's go on Raicilla and beer explorations. Um, what is the name of the TV show you were talking about at the pool party? How would you know if you were not even there? What? show were we talking about we were talking about several oh shit um let me let me ask Michal Mark because she's my brain uh she probably remembers the show she was there as well uh because for the life of me I cannot remember what shows we were talking about but I'll be happy to get back to you on that one and this brings us to the end of today's broadcast. Thank you very much. Not very Vallarta-centered, but again, we love to um, we love to connect with other aspects of life in Mexico as well. And I hope you appreciate those connections as much as I do. It is only Monday, but there's lots of things to be done this week, from wrapping up uh, the Thursday presentation to. Uh, prepping and getting people excited about the spotlight on Wednesday. But it's always a pleasure to be here every morning with you. So I wish you a great Monday, a great week, and I hope to see you again soon. And last but not least, thank you for all the birthday wishes. They mean so much to me. <laughs>